Okay, welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about the sun's corona. Now corona really means crown, it comes from the Latin derivative for crown and again when you normally when you look at the sun you're not going to see the corona. The sun is way too bright, it overshadows so to speak any visible light that we get from the corona but sometimes when the sun's disk gets covered by the moon we actually see the faint glow of the corona. Now most of the radiation that we get from the corona is in the x-ray re uh, region but there's also some visible light coming from the corona and so we get this faint uh, whitish color coming from the corona from a mixture of electron jumps that happen in the gases I shouldn't call them gases, they're basically um, uh, just simple atoms that have been ionized to very high levels because of very high temperatures that then give off all the various forms of radiation including visible light. Now the temperature of the corona varies from 1 to 2 million degrees Kelvin. We talked about the transition zone where the temperature from the chromosphere to the corona which is a very thin layer goes from about 25,000 Kelvin all the way up to a million Kelvin and then beyond that the temperature reaches as much as 2 million Kelvin. Now the corona extends far beyond the sun, several million kilometers away from the sun. So I've actually under-exaggerated the size of the corona. It's actually bigger than what I show you here. And in this picture here, you get a pretty good feel for the size of the corona. Now all this region around there is very, very rarefied gas where the density of the gas in the corona is far less dense than the density of the chromosphere, which is far less dense than the density of the photosphere, which is far less dense than the atmosphere of the Earth. So let's put things in perspective. Remember when I talked about the photosphere, for the photosphere, the density, photosphere, let me write that down, the density was about 0.01% or 1 10,000 the density of the Earth's atmosphere. For the chromosphere, the chromosphere was roughly about 0.01% the density of the photosphere, which would make it 1 100 millionth the density of the Earth's atmosphere. And the corona, the density of the corona is about 0.01% the density of the chromosphere. So you add another 10,000 to that, it's about 1 trillionth the density of the Earth's atmosphere. 1 in a trillion. So for every one molecule or one atom in the corona, there's 10 trillion atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. So it's very, very rarefied. Nevertheless, it's extremely hot. Again, we don't really know why the corona is this hot. We know that it receives an enormous amount of energy from the sun, but we just don't know how that energy is transferred to the corona. We feel that it probably has something to do, to do with the magnetic fields around the corona, with the spicules, spicules that that reach out into the corona, past the chromosphere, past the transition zone. It may have something to do with energy being blasted from the sun, the flares from the sun. We don't really know. There's a bunch of theories out there. We're still trying to figure it out. But we do know that it's very hot. Before we realized how hot the corona was, we had a hard time understanding what the corona really was. During solar eclipses, we would take measurements and we would see radiation come from the corona and we would see what we call uh, radiation in or spectral lines from the atoms in the corona that we didn't recognize. Just like when we first started looking at the sun, the disk of the sun, we started, we started seeing spectral lines from helium, which at the time was not a known substance on the Earth, and therefore we didn't know what we're looking at. So there was this unknown element on the sun that we did not yet see in the laboratories on the Earth, and so we, we call the spectral lines the spectral lines of the element helium, which was therefore first discovered by looking at the sun, and we now know, of course, that helium is one of the noble gases. But we saw that we first discovered by the spectral lines. When we saw the, we saw the spectral lines from the corona, we cannot identify what we're looking at. And so maybe there was an element on, in the corona that we didn't know, and we call that element coronium, named after the region around the sun, the corona. So coronium, which of course later on we find out there is no such thing as coronium. So what were we looking at? Well, we're actually looking at the spectral lines of very highly ionized gases. For example, the, uh, the carbon, the nitrogen, and the oxygen that was found in the corona were ionized down to three electrons. With a, three electrons were stripped away from carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Therefore, the spectral lines that we saw was from the electron jumps of the electrons farther down into uh, below the below the what we call the um, 
the first and second electrons, which are much more easily removed from the, uh, from the nucleus, given the normal spectral lines of these elements. So we saw the, the elements of, of the, uh, we saw the, uh, let me back that up a little bit. We saw the, uh, the electron jump, the photons and the electron jumps that we were not familiar with. Also, we also saw, for example, iron, and we saw calcium in the corona. And again, we did not recognize that because the spectral lines that we saw from the iron and the calcium were very different from the ones that we normally see because so many electrons had been stripped away from these, from these atoms. So that is how we finally discovered how hot the corona had to be in order to get these spectral lines emitted. Remember that most of the, uh, most of the radiation that comes away from the corona is in the X-ray region and that's because of the very, very high temperatures that we find in the corona. So the corona is a very interesting place. It's also the source of the solar wind. Every second of every day, over one million tons of particles, mostly electrons and protons and some alpha particles, get ejected into space uh, because of the high temperatures given the, the atoms and the electrons in this region, such high velocities that they actually escape the escape velocity of the sun. At the surface of the sun, the escape velocity is equal to 643 kilometers per second, which is very high compared to the Earth, which is only 11 kilometers per second. But the corona is so hot that the particles in the corona can have speeds beyond the 643 kilometers per second, and so they can be ejected out into space, which then forms a solar wind that's that then fills the solar system with these particles emanating from the sun. So that's what we talk about when we talk about the corona. That's what we mean. It's this region around the sun which has very spiky kind of shapes because of the activity on the sun. Um, it covers a region that goes out millions of kilometers away from the sun's surface and it has extremely high temperatures which causes particles in that region to be able to be ejected away from the sun exceeding the escape velocity of the sun. And that's the corona.